Do you guys remember Beambots? Beambots? It was this super old school maker movement, maybe 20, 25 years ago. People would build these hyper minimalistic, autonomous, solar powered robots. And despite being deliberately minimal, many of these robots displayed really interesting and complex behavior. So naturally, I've always wanted to build a beam bot that plays music. And that's what I'm going to do today. Additionally, I was reflecting on just how much easier making has gotten since then. Parts are so much better, the supply chain is better, it's easy to get information, it's easier to prototype stuff, and so I also think it's worthwhile in its own right to take a fresh look at some of these classic Beambot techniques. In related news, you might know that a few years ago I built Dr. Squiggles, which is a musical tapping robot that uses solenoids to play rhythms. And this robot doesn't move around or anything, it just sits there and taps on whatever surface it happens to be on. But today I want to build a Beambot version of this that's solar powered, at least somewhat more minimal. Oh wait, this is YouTube! It'll be solar powered! Minimal! And I want it to be able to move around. Or at least I want it to be able to scoot or kind of vibrate itself around by tapping rhythms. And people always ask me about these little knit caps that Dr. Squiggles is wearing. And the answer is yes, I knit those myself on a knitting machine that I have. I also knit this hat that I'm wearing now. And I dyed it blue with indigo that I extracted from weeds growing behind Walmart. And I have a whole video about that on my other channel. And if you too want to be cute and cozy in this freezing cold weather like me and my robots, you can pick one of these up on my website. And that would also help support me in making these videos, so I would appreciate that. Please, guys, I'm broke! So I was playing around with some solenoids, and I really like these round ones from LEDX, but annoyingly, this little plunger part just falls out. Seriously, what the hell do you guys expect me to do with this? Fortunately, that was easy enough to fix with a drill and a file, and a C-clip, and a spring, and a piece of aluminum tube, and some super glue. Okay, it wasn't that easy to fix, but now these work very well. And I know from experience that usually if you start with the solenoid already touching the ground, it won't be strong enough to eject. But if you start with it a little up off of the ground, then it'll strike the ground with a good amount of force. So I'm going to need to hold these up somehow. And so I got these rolly ball bearing furniture caster wheel thingies, which are surprisingly, well, rolly. And my plan is to put solenoids around here like this so it can sort of kick itself around. Oh, fail! Okay, maybe something more like this? I don't know. Okay, I'm convinced that something like this is going to work, but I'll come back to this later. Because I don't want this robot to just move around randomly. I want it to seek light or move in the direction of a light source. And I can't tell if this is a brilliant idea or a stupid one. It's kind of brilliant because I like to think of this like it's some little organism that can just wander around outside and forage for its own energy source. But it's also kind of stupid because since this is powered with solar panels, the fact that it's on already kind of suggests that it's already in optimal lighting. But I guess if I could get it to kind of scoot out of a partial shadow, I would consider that a win. So I got these photo transistors, and these are light sensors, so I'm going to use them for this purpose. And for now, I just want to see if these are even going to work. So just for the sake of testing, I connected three of them to a microcontroller. And here, I'm plotting the brightness of each one, kind of scaled between 0 and 1. And the scene as a whole is pretty evenly lit, but the light source is up over there. So the light sensor that I've labeled blue is kind of pointed right at the light. And in the plot, the corresponding blue line is also at the top, indicating that it has the most light. So then if I rotate this whole thing so the orange sensor starts pointing towards the light, 
the corresponding orange line in the plot kind of fades in while the blue line fades out. Then if I keep going, the orange line fades out while the green line fades in. And if I go all the way around, finally the green line fades out and the blue one fades back in. And now we're back to where we started. So yeah, that actually works better than I thought it would. That gives a reasonable approximation of where the light is relative to the robot. Okay, so I have sensors and I have actuators, and now I need some kind of circuit to glue them together. And as I said before, I want to power this with solar panels, and in my case, I'm going to need more than 9 volts worth of solar panels. And as a side note, you can make the voltage as high as you want just by stringing together multiple panels in series. And I'm going to use the solar panels to charge a big-ass supercapacitor on the order of one farad. So when this is exposed to light, the capacitor will start to charge, and the voltage across the capacitor will slowly rise towards the maximum output of the panels. But I want my robot to stay off until it gets up to 9 volts. Then I want my robot to automatically switch itself on and start doing whatever it does, and that's going to drain the capacitor faster than the solar panels can charge it, so the voltage will start to drop again. Then, in my case, once it drops all the way down to 6 volts, I want my robot to automatically switch itself back off so the capacitor can start charging again. And this can be accomplished with a voltage supervisor. And you won't find one with the exact thresholds that you want, but that's okay. You can set the rising threshold with a voltage divider, like this. And you can set the falling threshold with a feedback resistor. And then you're also going to need a pull-up resistor on the voltage supervisor output. And if any of you are playing along at home, here is what you can do. You should use this particular voltage supervisor. Then you choose the rising and falling thresholds that you want. I guess anything between maybe 2 and 18 volts will work. Then select the largest possible value for the feedback resistor R3, at least 1 mega ohm, and select the pull up resistor R4 to be a few tens of kilo ohms. Then you can use these equations to calculate the correct values for the voltage divider resistors R1 and R2. And that will work, but most likely these equations will give you weird resistor values, so you can round them to the nearest values that you can actually buy and then use these equations to find out what the thresholds are actually going to be. And I might try to put a calculator for this on my website to make this easier. The other thing about this particular voltage supervisor is that it's glitchy when it's powered with less than one volt. But I want to make sure that my robot is definitely off at low voltage. So a JFET here filters out any low voltage glitches. Then this here is the output of this whole part of the circuit. This is what is going to turn on and off as the capacitor charges and discharges. And so you can see that when I switch this light on, the big ass capacitor starts to charge and the output of the circuit stays off. Then when the voltage here reaches 9 volts, the output suddenly switches on. And right now, I don't have anything connected to this that's actually going to drain the capacitor. So just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to shove a resistor in here to short it out to kind of simulate the robot switching on. And now you can see the voltage drops as the capacitor discharges, and the output remains on until the voltage falls down to 6 volts, then suddenly the output switches off. And then in principle, it would start charging again. And I'll note that for this demo, I used a smaller capacitor so it would charge and discharge faster, just so I could show it. So if you wanted to, you could use this output directly to turn a motor on and off. And this is a modern equivalent of what back in the day would have been called a Miller solar engine, although the main component of that is no longer manufactured. But this is basically the core part of what many analog beam bots were back then. But in my case, I'm not going to directly switch a motor on and off like this. Instead, I want to switch on and off a voltage regulator. And I'm going to use that to power a little microcontroller. 
and I'm using this cute little AT Tiny 402, which is surprisingly powerful for its size, and it requires zero external components, and you can program it with Arduino. Although for me, it ended up being easier not to use Arduino, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a moment. But this is a pretty sweet little circuit. I guess it's sort of a digital beambot, and it's interesting to brainstorm what other things you could do with the solar-powered mini computer that just turns itself on and off every now and then whenever it can. And I definitely want to play around with this more in the future. But for this project, I'm going to connect my photo transistors to analog inputs of the microcontroller, and I'll connect my solenoids to digital outputs like so. And I'll also throw in a programming header. And so I had this whole thing made into a proper PCB, so I soldered all the components on, and then the big ass capacitor goes on the back. And the solenoids plug in like so. Okay, never mind that little bodge wire there. And try not to notice it getting worse and worse as this video progresses. And so now I need to program this. And I'm using this handy Adafruit USB programmer. And this is my code, and I'll explain it in a moment, but for now I'm just going to compile it. Then I can upload it to my robot. And I also need to program some of the microcontroller fuses. So I'll explain briefly how the code works. Like most of my robots, the main function does some initialization, and then there's just this empty loop here that does nothing. And that's because the initialization, which is here, basically configures some timers and interrupt service routines so that everything the robot does either happens automatically in hardware or in an interrupt service routine that's automatically called by hardware at regular intervals. And so this is the first interrupt, and it just reads the light sensors over and over again, round robin, so that I always have fresh sensor readings just sitting around when I need them. And I also use the readings to add entropy to a random number generator so that the robot plays a slightly different rhythm every time it turns on. And here's the random number generator. Then this is the other interrupt service routine which actually generates rhythms. And I'm simplifying a little, but what it basically does is divide time into 16th notes. Ticka 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 ticka. And then on each 16th note, it finds the dimmest, brightest and intermediate light sensor, and the solenoid corresponding to the brightest one will tap with 60% probability. The dimmest one will not tap, and the intermediate one will tap with a probability between 0 and 60% proportional to how bright it is. Yeah, so that should result in a random-ish rhythm that hopefully has a little bit of groove to it and can also move the robot in the direction of the light. And so I'm just powering this from the wall for now, but you can see if I shine a light into one sensor, the opposite solenoid plays a little rhythm. And if I shine it between the sensors, then kind of the two opposite solenoids play. And this sensor makes this solenoid play, and so forth. Okay, so that's good. Now I've got to figure out how to hold these damn things. And after much gnashing of teeth, I decided to 3D print this base. Oh, that's nice. I've never really been in love with 3D printing, in part because of plastic and all of that. But I have to say, this is nice. And I ended up using three of these little wheelie things. And then the board goes on here like this with some standoffs. And the solenoids get zip tied on. And I'm still powering this from the wall for now, but let's see how this works. Yeah, so you can see it does move towards the light. Not very efficiently, but it does work. So I'll consider that a win for now. 
okay, so now I need to actually put some solar panels on here. And I ended up going with a bunch of these smaller ones, mainly because I like the form factor. And I had a board made for these too. And you aren't supposed to reflow these, but they also don't have through hole pins. So I'm not really sure what they expect me to do. So I put these big holes in the board and kind of squirted solder paste into the back of them and then just poked in there with a soldering iron and soldered it from the back that way. And that ended up working really well. And even in my dim apartment, these produce 10 volts and outside they get up to 19 volts in the sun or 15 volts in the shade. And this is really good because it means that the robot should still be able to charge up to nine volts, even in the shade. So then it should be able to move itself back into the sun. So maybe it wasn't a stupid idea after all. And then the solar panels snap into the main board like this. Okay, yeah, that's it. I think this is finished. So let's take it outside and see what happens. You wanna take this outside? Yeah, that's so cool. This turns on about every two minutes in full sun and then it plays for about eight seconds. And that's using a 0.6 farad supercapacitor. I guess I could have used a larger one and extended the time. Anyway, here it is in partial shade. And even with just this little bit of shade, it does charge noticeably slower. Yeah, it did move itself out of the shadow. Yeah, I'll consider that a win. Here it is with the shade on the other side. Yeah, that definitely works. I guess the issue is that it gets stuck on any little bit of texture or curvature in the surface of the table. I guess I kind of expected that. So this isn't really gonna move through terrain or anything like that. But at least hypothetically, I still really love the idea that you could just release this little guy outside and it would just wander the fields and valleys kind of rocking out and vibing and foraging for sunlight living its own little life day after day, year after year. Yeah, so I'm really happy with how this project turned out. That was a lot of fun. And I definitely want to play around with some more solar powered musical robots in the future, especially now that I kind of have some of the basics worked out. So if you guys have any ideas, please let me know. I'd be especially interested if any of you can think of other interesting ways of combining locomotion with music production. So yeah, please let me know in the comments if you've got any great ideas. But anyway, I guess that was all I was gonna say about this for now. Thanks for watching as usual. Please subscribe and all that kind of crap. And maybe go buy a microphone or a cozy hat on my website. And I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.